I'm an avid bow hunter, and I, I enjoy bow hunting for, for deer. I went out, uh, we had had snow about three or four inches on top of the mountain. It, it was probably about five or six inches, but then uh, the snow kind of tapered off toward the bottom of the mountain. And uh, I had got on my four wheel and went up to the top of the ridge there. And uh, when I go in the woods, I always carry a, uh, a rifle with me whenever I'm, I'm not bow hunting. I carry a, a 243 rifle with me. And uh, I got up, parked the four wheel and got off the four wheeler and made about, I don't know, went maybe 30 or 40 yards away from the four wheeler. And, <coughs> excuse me, on the four wheeler trail, I see a quite a large human looking footprint. So I'm, I'm looking at that footprint and I just see one footprint and I'm like, I'm looking around, you know, someone playing a, a joke, a prank or something, you know, what in the world is a pretty good sized human footprint in the snow here? I looked there, looked at it for a couple of minutes and kind of just shrugged it off like, you know, just an anomaly in the snow or something. Maybe a, an owl come out of the tree and caught a, you know, a, a mice in the snow or something that just made it look like a footprint. What you are about to watch is completely real. The following individuals are not actors. They will recall events where they have encountered the mysterious wonder of the world Bigfoot. Nothing in this program was staged or falsified. Terry, what was you doing when you seen this Bigfoot? Just walking up a road and, and just kind of looked up so there and there's something that just uh, Black looking, walked down them bushes down there and uh, just uh, trotted across the road and went up in the mountain to trotting like crazy up a hill. Solid black. Solid black. Did you get to see its face? It looked kind of like a, a monkey. It looked like six foot tall, right? Close to at least tall as me? Yeah. Well, I'm almost six four, so. It was pretty big. And uh, <laughs> was it moving pretty fast across yeah, the road? It, it came out of the bushes and stood in front of that tree down there. And uh, <clears throat> it, it stood there a few seconds and then it started humping over and trotting across with its arms slant. But was was it no person or the bear or nothing either? Well, I'm sure, I know we do have bears in this area, yeah, but. There wasn't uh, no bear. <laughs> no, you would, you would recognize the a bear. Bears don't have big long arms and <laughs> it's black looking, furry looking. Did you get a good look at its uh, side and its legs and things like that? It had feet. Like a person? Like a person, yeah. Did you say you seen its face at all? Yeah, it's, uh, it's like, kind of like a monkey and then a lot of gorilla's body. Terry also describes his 2006 sighting of a Bigfoot in a creek near his home. March of 2006. March of 2006. Yeah, I was walking down the railroad up there. Have long chick herds there. Which and is I, which is about yeah. a, uh, maybe a mile up the road. Yeah, and uh, it's coming up a creek, it's sloshing. And I looked up and I got close to sit from here to that there freezer. I mean, he's right in front of it. Oh, you was that close to him. looking dude. <laughs> How big was it? <laughs> Bigger than tall, taller than that freezer there. So <laughs> it was, big. it was probably seven, it eight, eight foot tall. Seven, eight foot tall. It flew up that hill fire. I know that. It scared me. And it scared it was, me too. I jumped back. It was in the creek? It was in the creek coming up, sloshing in the water, yeah. You, do you think maybe it was uh, just washing itself or was it trying to maybe catch a fish? I don't know. And it run up that hill. I told it's eating me. I scared me. It's about it. I froze. Was it the same color as this one yeah, you seen this year? black. But it wasn't the same one because it was bigger. It was bigger, yeah. So that means at least there's two mm -hmm. right here in this general area. Yeah, it must be. <laughs> and I happened to look on the bank on the other side of the polar trail and I see a second footprint. And I realized it's the opposite foot from the first footprint. I've hunted this area for 10 or 12 years and never had ever run across a person in the woods, nothing. So I'm like, I'm gonna follow these, you know, footprints and see who it is.
Bill McKissick, who had a run-in with a Bigfoot back in the 70s, Ooh. and he's sitting down to tell us the story with us. We get the goosebumps already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it started, uh, a friend of mine, we're, we're living out in Cow Creek and Azalea, about 15 miles out. Back then, there wasn't very many houses out there, Bobby. I mean, there's like two or three houses out there, wasn't very many. Um, we've been out there about two years, I guess, and um, I was helping my dad on the ranch. That's all I did. Was there on the ranch and was taking an afternoon on a Saturday afternoon or Sunday, I can't remember the days for sure, but it was on the weekend and we were out there messing around, a friend of mine and I were, and uh, we'd been all over that place that morning and we would, went back to the house and had some lunch and was coming back out, walking down the road behind, between the house and the barn, I don't know, probably a thousand feet, fifteen hundred feet from the house, and uh, got the smell in this, ooh, the smell, man, it was just horrible, and uh, got to looking around and we seen it. Well, at first I thought it was the bear behind the stone, and I thought, thought that was what the smell was. So we turned, and, and him and I both were looking up the hill, and it stood up. And when it stood up, I think it realized we seen it, and we seen, and he seen us. And he turned and went up the hill. I say he, but yeah, I do that because I don't know for sure whether it was female or male. Okay. But it was definitely Bigfoot. There was no doubt about it. <laughs> no doubt about it. Look at that, <laughs> man. I don't right. think I've ever been so scared in my life. You told me um, when we did the in initial interview <clears throat> that you had uh, noticed it, and your uh, your dad, you were living with your dad at the time? Well, my family, You yeah. guys had noticed that uh, you had a few calves missing and found actually one dead cow? Yeah, cow. I uh, didn't, uh, there was no marks on it uh, when we found it. Um, my dad actually thought that we had shot it, but we hadn't been shooting up in that area. It had been way up on top of the hill where we were shooting at. So I'm assuming that's what it was there for, either that or maybe the creek or the pond that was just down there behind the barn. Yeah. So I'm not for sure about that. But. And you also had mentioned that there was uh, chickens missing too. Oh yeah, oh yeah, chickens, uh, eggs and chickens, oh man, there's that actually been a lot of stuff missing there around the house. We just thought it was coyotes, yeah. you know, and I, I still think probably, probably some of it was, some of them. yeah, it was coyotes, but um, it was awful close to the house is what really spooked me and I told my dad about it and he's the type that you know if you don't see it you don't believe it yeah. so you know he kind of dismissed it and I hadn't said anything else to anybody else about it uh, until I told you Bobby about what happened. Well in your description you, you said that the Bigfoot was nine foot tall. Um, oh, at least. Was that based on how large the stump was yeah. it was up behind it? Yes. Once it, three once foot it, wide at the shoulder. Oh man, he was big. Once it yeah. stood up, I mean, like I said, when I first seen it, I thought it was a, you know, just a bear sitting there, a big black bear. Because, you know, it, it was squatted down, the stump was big enough that all I seen was just a, about mid-drift and the shoulders up and then the head. And I thought it was just a bear sitting there looking at us and that's what we thought the smell was. But when it stood up, it stood up and it kept going and going and going. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I don't, I've never seen anything like that. I hope to God I get to see it again, but... Well, I didn't bring it with me, but we uh, actually, not exactly where you've seen your Sasquatch, uh -huh. we're um, very near there. It's called Horseshoe Road. I know where it is, yes. Okay, we pulled uh, prints from there. Really? Yeah, I've got it. I actually got one at the house. Wow. And uh, our sighting was nowhere near there, but, you know, there's been uh, reports yeah. out of that area, so I'm not surprised if you didn't. Uh, did see one. Oh, I did, Bobby. There's no doubt about it. There is no doubt about it. Now, I, you know, when I first thought about it, and you know, I talked to my my dad about it, I thought, well, maybe you know, maybe I maybe I was wrong. But after I get to thinking about it, there's no bear that big that I've ever met. Not in this not in this area. Well, um, even though it's a almost a 40, actually, it is a 40 year old story. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're telling it with so much heart and so much description that I, you know, personally, my experience, and I've known you for a long time. I I think that. You may have seen one. Man, you know, I, to me... It's giving me goosebumps thinking about it. <laughs> I, you know, I actually had a dream about it the other night after we talked and we did this, you know. Uh, there was no doubt it was Bigfoot. It was it was bipedal. And when it turned to go up the hill, it was going. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't walking. It was running. And it would it was it was clearing distance a lot faster than a man in a monkey suit would have been. Why would or be, even a bear, probably. Yeah, even a bear, yeah. And it was on two feet. Bear, as far as I know, don't run uphill on two feet. I don't think it's possible for a bear to run on two feet, that, you know, up the yeah. hill. I've seen them stand up on two feet, yeah. but not run. Um, Is I there anything else you can add to the story? Um, um, okay, you described you heard footfalls. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, like, you could hear boom, it when he was boom, running. Boom, yeah. Boom. Wow. Yeah, you could hear it. He was he was definitely putting them up, taking them up, and putting them down. It didn't take him long to disappear, because um, I think what happened was when I look back at my friend, you know, with this astonished look on my face, because I didn't, you know, I, I, it, it astonished me. By the time I looked back, all I seen was just one more glimpse of his back as he disappeared. And once he disappeared, you could still hear the footfalls, but you couldn't see him anymore. Okay, so you could hear him but not see him yeah. after the initial two good sightings, and then he, he just ran away. Bobby, I was close enough I could see facial features. I had Mike joking it, and it wasn't no, there wasn't no snout. It was it was humanoid. I mean, it wasn't human, but it was humanoid. Close enough. Yeah, yeah. the the nose was flat. His cheeks were round and, and just, I mean, that guy's head looked like three sizes of a foot, I mean, a basketball, like a beach ball. There you go. At least that big. He was huge, Bobby. With my experience with him, Look at that. yeah, I know. <laughs> with my experience with him, did, did, I, were you able to notice if it had a coned head? Like, um, they call it a sagittal crest. Yeah, it's I, you know, Bobby, like this a little bit. To be honest with you, I didn't really, other than notice, noticing how big the head was, I didn't see. I'm not saying that it's not there. I'm just saying that I didn't actually pay attention because I was looking at him, not at his scared, head. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the overwhelming fear when you see something like that is, you know, it's fear, disbelief, and then astonishment. Yeah. Yeah. A few weeks after that, you know, I this friend of mine. I'm not. Gonna, I can't mention his name because I haven't asked him. But um, this friend of mine that was I, we, him and I talked about it a couple of weeks later, and you know. It, that's when I realized what it was. At first, I didn't know what it was. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't explain it. I never seen anything like that before. So, to be honest with you, and I had never heard anything about Bigfoot back then. Yeah. So I didn't know for sure what it was. I know I thought, you know, I was, like my dad said, I was seeing things. But him and I got to talking about it, and two people seeing the same thing. That's not seeing. That's not hallucination. That's no. not, that's honest fact. Yeah. yeah. Had you been by yourself, it had been uh, hard, harder to believe it, the exactly. story. So. And uh, I know who the other witness is, and uh, I, I trust him. Please. I get to a, a close to a wolf thicket, and I can see that the, the strides have shortened quite a bit. They're not near as long as they were when I first found them. They're only about a stride and a half of mine now in between the footprints. So, I'm coming up on this little thicket, and I get within about 30 to 40 yards of this little thicket, and I hear a, a pretty heavy grunt. We're here interviewing a gentleman this morning uh, just outside of uh, Cimarron, New Mexico that uh, had an encounter driving on this road. Would you please introduce yourself and uh, tell us about it? Uh, my name is Angelo. Um, I was driving this way about 11 o'clock at night and uh, I saw a set of eyes in the road so I started to slow down and as I got closer it was about a eight foot tall you know something <laughs> and it just walked off the side of the road down here where he's at and you know it kind of crept down this way and after that i don't know where it went <laughs> yeah how long would you estimate how long did it take it to cross the road uh, about two steps maybe three steps you know if i was compared to a human you know it'd take us about eight or nine right and the way it moved it was just like it was off the road pretty And quick. when was this encounter? Uh, about three years ago. And what time of year? Uh, about spring. Okay. Yeah, and Real late at night, you know, so there wasn't a whole lot of activity on the road. Right. You know, and there was a few, few game animals out that night too, also. And... Yeah. Now this is right near a lake, and what's this lake called? Uh, it's called Miami Lake. It's Miami Lake, okay. And... Uh, what was the water level at that time? Was it similar to what yeah, it is yeah, now? Yeah, about to these, this bush line right here. So it was a lot higher than yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a lot higher. All right. Oh, and at that time we were in a pretty bad drought also, you know. Compared to this, is this is uh, drinking water, so, you know, they always irrigate to it. 
So, you know, the water up there is probably, whatever's out there is pretty dry. You said there's some ponds up there on the... Yeah, there's, there's a few back there, you know, a ways back there. Right. So they're probably dry, so... Now, is that your first experience? Yes, that was the first time I ever saw anything. Now, when we were talking yesterday, you mentioned some other uh, stuff that you'd experienced here in the local area. Would you tell us about that, yeah, please? Uh, at my house, you know, uh, about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, sometimes I'll go outside and, you know, I could hear a bunch of, like, screaming noises, you know, like, yeah, like the, the Sasquatch noise, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And it's happened probably about three or four nights in about a two-week period. So it's... They're pretty active there. Right. Now, you've grown up in this area all your life, yes. right? So you know what other animals sound like. And yeah, yeah, we hear coyotes out there all the time, you know, elk, dogs, raccoons even sometimes. You know, and I had never heard that noise at all. Now, have you heard fox, how the fox cry? You ever heard that? I've, I've heard them here and there. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, I mean, it was, that would have been a pretty big fox. Right. <laughs> you know, because it was in the distance. You could tell it was, you know. It okay, sounded like it was a real ready. deep voice. Yeah, it sounded like a like a yelping kind of, like when a dog's injured. But, you know, I've been around that all my life also, you know, so I know it wasn't that. Okay. Well, that's great. Well, we appreciate your time today and tell us about it. And, no problem. Um, there has been reports around here, uh, other reports that I've seen. Uh -huh. cause after I had first talked to your mother, we I did a little checking around, and a couple of people I know that do research around uh -huh. this area. Yeah. That, uh, and we'll have to uh, keep an eye out in this area. And That's got to be a bear, because I've heard bears, you know, grunt and, and snap their teeth when they're, when, when they're angry and stuff. I was like, that's just a darn bear, you know. So I uh, took my rifle off my shoulder and, and engaged the shell. And got within probably 25 yards of the thicket, and I could see something in the thicket moving a little bit. It wasn't moving a lot, but I could see it. It, it looks like its upper body was moving, but not the lower part of the body. So this is a recording of Doreen McKissick and her sighting on February the 22nd of 2014. Can you tell me what you saw? Oh yeah, we were going, uh, coming, going by our friend's house because they weren't home and after we went past that very place there on Weaver Road, that's right up where you start going into Wood Park up there, I looked to my left and there was sheep down below. And I seen this. I thought it was a shadow uh -huh. that was in a tree, hanging up. Uh, it looked like a shadow. And then the closer we got, it was something standing there with their, its hands up over the lamp. Oh wow! And it, my grandson. I would have never thought nothing about it, but my grandson said, "Grandma, did you see that?" I said, "What is that, River?" He said, "I don't know, but I'm not getting out of the vehicle." And it was, it was big. It was big. It had, it had its hands up. You can see its, ha its hands, or whatever it was, hanging over the other side. Like it was hanging on the limb like that. Like it was going to swing or something. Huh. And it was right above. And when we slowed down and we went back up, it was gone. It just disappeared. And River said, Grandma, don't get out of the car. Don't get out of the car. Hmm. And I said, well, what was that? And he said, I don't know. And I told Billy, Billy, what was that? And he said, I don't know, but I seen it. He said, I said, it looks like a, a big, here's he, Billy, how, that had to be eight foot tall, something like that, eight foot tall. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was big, mm -hmm. and it freaked me and River out, and every time we go up on Weaver Road now, we watch for it, and I've never seen it again there. About how close were you to it? Could you oh, see any facial features? or? The yeah, it was hairy. It was hairy. It was hairy. What about the brow or the nose? Could you see? Could no, you see? I wasn't up that close. It wasn't close enough mm -hmm. to the... Huh. And its hands, did you see its hands? It's, it, it, was hung, it was hanging onto a lamb above him. 
So was his hands like gripping onto it? Yeah! Or yeah. was he just hanging, his hand like was Like his hand over. was hanging over it. Oh, okay. Like it, he was going to swing or something, mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And, and River was like, Grandma, what is that? So was it up kind of like on the cliff of a road? like, like Okay, it was right where you come around the corner there. Yeah. And start to go up in the wooded part. Okay. Right there. Right there above that sheep field. Oh, wow. Huh. And Billy said, Dory, where'd you go? I said, I don't know. River said, don't get out of the car, Grandma. Don't get out of the car. Huh. About how long do you think that the um, encounter was? Well, we seen it, and then I, and Billy said, and then we looked over, he looked over at River, and River was like, why the sheep? And Billy just put on the brakes, it backed up, and before we could back up, it was gone. Oh, wow. So about 10 seconds. Yeah. Wow. And you say it was around dusk? Yep, right before dark time. Wow. And the sun was, it was just as the sun was starting to go down. Oh, okay. Sounds like to me you saw something. Yeah, I, I would say so. So you've always been a skeptic before. Yes. And this has made you a believer now? Yes, it's made me a believer. River, we got to hear River talk about it. He's like, Grandma, don't get out of the car. That thing was big. What was it, Grandma? I said, well, I don't know what it was any more than what you do. And then when we backed up, we were going to go back and check it out. It was gone. It was just like it disappeared. It was gone. And then the next day we went up to see our friends up there. And there was two sheep down there dead. Okay. So he was hunting. He was doing something, yeah. Sounds like he was hunting. Yes. Huh. Well, thank you, Doreen. Um, I'll get this put in and we'll see what we can do with it. That'll work. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go hunt for, for it again. Because our friends live right up in the wood part there, back up on the hill. Huh. Well, when you do do that, let us know and we'll all go together. We'll go together, it Maybe sounds. Maybe we can uh, find some more uh, evidence. That work. That would work. Yeah, it would. Well, Made a believer out of us. I know. I'm uh, ecstatic that you've seen one because you've always been such a skeptic. Yeah. And uh, now I can actually talk to you without you making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> you wait till you see River. You ask him, hey River, what'd you see up on the Weaver Road? And he'll tell you. He'll say, I see Bigfoot. I see something. It was something. It was big. He said, I told Grandma not to get out of the car. Don't get out of the car, Grandma. And he was just looked like all the blood had drained from his face. Right. He was white. Wow. And he, talk, he told everybody about it. He says, Grandma, tell Dad what you see. Tell, tell, tell him what we've seen. And it was really weird because just up and around the corner is where our friend lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Have they said anything about it? Not yet, but I'm going to ask them. Huh. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. I wonder if um, maybe here in the future you could take us up there and maybe we could find out if there's some kind of footprints or... Yeah, because I'll never forget where it was at, you ever. Can show us the tree branch that I was will. Seeing. It was weird because, you know, most things, if you see them in a tree or something like that, they're climbing. Yeah. Or something like that. So it was it was just standing there looking around. Mm. So he must have been hunting or something. Yeah. That or he was getting ready to swing and go across the road or something? That, yeah! Like he was, but he saw you and so maybe. Yeah. Okay, well, I think that concludes our interview. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And where it was at in the ticket, I, did, I couldn't get a real good look at it. So I started moving around to the left of the ticket and uh, it was hard to, it takes me back to <laughs> that day. Um, kind of rough. Uh, and when I did, they get grunted again at me. And I, now I'm within probably pretty darn close. I'm, I'm too, I know, I realize I'm too damn close. You know, you know, and I'll put the rifle up and I'm going to go ahead and, you know, shoot it. And I'm getting ready to shoot. And I hear something to the left of me. Okay, this is River Sampson. This is Doreen McKissick's grandson. And he is also going to give us his interview 
about his sighting on February the 22nd of 2014. So why don't you go ahead and tell me what you saw, River? Well, we were um, driving up on um, Weaver Road and up in the hills, yeah, and we saw um, this big, tall, hairy-looking thing going like this with his hand up by a branch, uh -huh. and he was holding the branch, and one was like this. Yeah. And then we drove past it, and I'm all, guys, did you see that? And ever since, I didn't see anything. So did it scare you? How, how did it make you feel when you saw that? Oh, we I, didn't I, I thought it, I, I, I said, do we want to go now? <laughs> <laughs> and so... Then, what did you think when you saw it? Did you think, well, that was a bear or is it a we bear? We didn't know what it was. No, I, th I, 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 I said that I, I, think this, I think this might have been a big foot. That's wow. what I thought. So did you think that after that, after you saw that, that you were afraid to get out of the rig? Or did you want to go back and check it out? That's or? why I don't like the dark. <laughs> oh, you think there's a big foot in the dark? <laughs> well, is that all you saw? Do you want to add to your sighting? That's all I saw. Can you um, tell me about your, like when you saw it, did you see any features that you thought was weird or that looked like big. another animal, big? What, I mean, it's how big and tall and it was kind of a little um, fat. <laughs> it's kind of fat like a chimp, but it's way taller and way bigger. So I, I swung around to the left to look, and looking dead at me at about 30 yards is about a five and a half foot tall hairy man. He's about maybe 15 feet into the tree, black fur, long, long hair on him. And I mean, I almost, I mean, it made me, I was so, scared that it, I came close to vomiting. So I, I'm easing back, and about that time, the big one, which was in the little thicket, which I thought was a bear, stands up. I'm with Steve who had a Bigfoot encounter. Uh, Steve, start off by telling us what state, county, and town that you had your encounter in. I was in Tennessee, Claiborne County, which is in uh, the Forge Ridge area of that county there. Uh, all right, and then tell us what year, and then tell us what you were doing. Well, I don't know the exact year. It was in the uh, late 70s. Um, I was a young teenager at the time. And uh, I was squirrel hunting. It was uh, one evening, getting kind of dusky dark, but you could still see real good through the woods. And uh, I was sitting there against a tree. And um, I heard something coming down the hill. It was on the hillside where I was sitting there in the woods at. And I um, thought, well, it's a squirrel coming. So I just, you know, kept sitting there watching it. And I started seeing something white coming down through the woods. And the closer it got down, I could see it was tall walking like a man. Uh, slinging its arms as it walked, taking pretty good strides as it was walking. I thought, golly, it was like, just estimating, probably seven, eight feet tall. And uh, it walks on down through the woods, just about parallel straight out from me there. And it stopped and turned facing me. It just standing there looking at me with its arms hanging down beside it. And uh, I was trying to make its face out. And like I said, it was only like 35, 40 yards away from me, but I couldn't make any facial features at all out about it. And all of a sudden that thing screamed, just like a woman screaming, is the only way I've always described it, real loud. And it turned and took a couple big leaps down the woods, stopped, and turned around and looked at me again, and started beating on trees that looked to be probably, I don't know, six, eight inches in diameter, something like that. And when it did that, I jumped up and took off back to the house. <laughs> but, I mean, that's, I don't know. That's... What kind of uh, gun did you have? Did you think about shooting at it? Or? No, Lord, I, well, I just had a shotgun, 20 gauge, but no, that was the farthest thing from my mind back then, you know. That's why I was talking to Cliff, 
you know, if uh, if I saw one now, would I shoot it? Would I run after it to see what it is, or would I run back to the house like I did first time? So, I mean, until you encounter something like that, you might think you're going to do this or that, but it's a little bit different when you're facing something that you really don't, you know, know what you're looking at. Well, what about the uh, hair on it? Does, was the uh, hair long, short? I couldn't really tell. Um, as far as I could just see it was solid white from the top of its head all the way down. And I couldn't tell you if its hair was, you know, short, long, or what. It was just a solid white creature. I don't know, you know, if it's short hair, long hair, or what. And I say white, and I've heard them seeing white once, and then I heard I saw one of the, one of the Bigfoot shows where they they actually called them a gray, like where they maybe when they get older, they turn gray like the rest of us do. I mean, you know, that's a possibility. Because years ago, <clears throat> when... Uh, my mom and aunt's name was growing up. They used to see one in the same area. And that was back in probably the 40s, I guess. And uh, the best I remember, they said it had brown hair. If it was the same one, like I say, it might have just got old or either might be a different one. I don't know. Well, had you heard of anybody else in that area seeing one about around the same time you did? or No, not Was that the anything time. that you was aware of at the time? No, no, never knew anything about seeing anything like that up in there at the time. No. How about strange noises now? You ever hear anything around that area? No, but believe me, I've listened. Well, how how long did it take you before you went back hunting in that area? Well, it was probably a little while, but it wasn't that long really because I've always hunted, you know. And, but, I, but I still, even today, you know, and that's been 30-some years ago. I'll still sit in the woods and think about that, you know. Well, at the time, I, I guess it was pretty scary for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You wanted to get out of there pretty quick. I'd say a rabbit couldn't outrun me down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty frightening there. Well, a lot of times when people see things like that, it's kind of a life changing mm -hmm. event for them because we're always told and taught that there's nothing like that out there. But right, yeah. But then when you see it for yourself, yeah, when you see it for yourself, you know it's just you know just like what I told uh, Cliff, you know, in the, in the movies down in Knoxville there that. Uh, I've never cared who believed me, and still don't, never will, because I know exactly what I saw, and the only thing I can describe it as is a white Bigfoot. I mean, it was no animal that, that's around here, and it was no human, no bear, nothing that they say, well, it might have been this, might have been that, nothing. I mean, the only thing it can be described as is a white Bigfoot. About how long did this whole encounter take place? From the time I probably saw it till I jumped up and run, I don't know, just a few minutes. You know, but because from the time I saw it coming down the hill, it was taking pretty long steps walking down the hill there. And then when it got right in front of me, it stopped. And, you know, it didn't stand there long until it screamed. And it took, like I said, a couple of leaps. And when it started smacking on that tree, I ran. So it probably just a few minutes, you know. Well, when it was smacking out. on the tree, did it make any more sound? or? No. No, when it started smacking on the tree, it's when I jumped up and run. Which is what uh, they asked me there, you know, at the Finding Bigfoot. said, did it make any other sounds? I said, I have no idea, buddy. I was going that way. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, now, you know, since I you know, got older and everything, I'd love to see that again. I would, you may not live to tell what it is, but I think, or I want to think, that I would go after it to see what it is. Well, I know a lot of times when you see stuff like that and you do take off, the only thing you can hear is the pounding of your own heart in your ears. Yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, you know, I killed a squirrel that earlier that evening, and uh, I always carried a little pouch with me, putting the squirrels in, and I left that laying there and never did go back and get it. Well, it probably got your squirrel. Oh, well, it probably did, yeah. <laughs> in fact, I went back to the same place later on, you know, hunting. Of course, there, it wasn't there, but, you know, anything could pack something like that off. But, yeah, I don't really know whether it would have been it or... Well, you know, Whatever. people people always say when you when you see something like that, they always say, "Well, it was a bear." Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, there's no chance mm -hmm. this could have been a bear. There ain't no way. No what way. would you tell somebody if they said, "Oh, you seen a bear?" Same thing I've always told them. You're crazy. You don't know what I saw. I'm the one that saw it. <laughs> no, it's definitely not a bear. I've never saw one walking on two legs like a man, slinging its arms as it walked. And its arms are longer. They 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 come down a little bit past its knees when it was walking out through our sling its arms. I picked up on that about how long its arms was. Did you notice any like a, like ears or anything like that or is it all covered with hair? It just 
evidently it was just all hair because I'm sure its skin probably wasn't white. So I just assumed it had white hair all over its face too. You know, I couldn't make any any details at all about it, its uh, facial features. And I was really trying to because I was, you know, I'd never even really heard that much about a Bigfoot back then, you know, and I was trying to really see what that thing was, you know, so what, what am I looking at right here? And um, when we first started watching that Finding Bigfoot thing, they, they first started talking, and I guess the first episode we watched, they was talking about uh, the screams and calls they make, and I thought, wow, you know, this thing screamed. And that girl on there, I heard her scream not too long ago in one of the episodes, and that sounded so much like what, what I heard. You heard. And then, you know, they talk about them hitting on trees, and mm -hmm. I thought, wow, you know, isn't it? It's just so, you know, and I thought, well, they're on something there. <laughs> because that's exactly two of the things that I saw actually with my own eyes happen. You, nobody could convince you otherwise because no, you've seen it. No, no, no way. I mean, no way. You that's do, just like us sitting here talking now. If you go home tonight, somebody said you didn't sit here and talk to him about that. I know I did. You know you did. So. Well, how, how long has it been since you've been back in that area, that same area? Oh, that's right across from where I live now. So you yeah. some place that you could. Oh, I, I grew up there, you know, just just in that same holler there. We grew up there, then end up um, building we're just right up from there. So it's actually right where my house sits now. It's just right across the road on the hillside there. I can look at you know right where it was at. How often do you look out the window and see if you see anything? Oh, I look a lot, <laughs> and I have through all through the years. And like I said, I deer hunt all the time, and I I don't think there was any days I sat there. And it don't cross my mind about something like that walking back through there. I mean, you just don't, you just don't forget it. it stays with you forever. It does, yeah. So I'm backing up, backing up. Well, the one in the tree grunts at me. Well, I, I, when he when he grunts at me, I throw my rifle up and put the scope right on its chest, center mass of the chest. And I click the safety off and I let it go and busted it right in the chest. When, you know, after I shot it, I turned and, you know, started to run. And I turned back and looked. Well, the big one is picking the small one off the ground. And this thing, this big one, grabs this rock cliff with one hand and picks itself and, I don't know if it's a mate or a sibling or I don't know what it is, you know, and carries them both up this sheer straight rock, rock cliff. This is Tom with the Crypto Crew. Many of you probably probably know me, probably seen me. Uh, I'm gonna tell you about my first encounter with Bigfoot. Now, I've never really told this before. I've uh, never told it in any great detail. Uh, a lot of times, you know, we get asked about kind of what got you into Bigfoot and that type of stuff. I had, uh, growing up, I had, uh, I had seen the Patterson film, I guess I was probably, I seen it on the news, I guess I was around, uh, I don't know, eight or ten year old or something, I don't know, but, uh, it was interesting at the time, I guess, and I didn't, you know, didn't think a whole lot about it, supposedly, you know, and, uh, well, anyways, this happened in, uh, 1985 in March of 1985 and the reason there's a couple reasons why I can remember the date I had to look it up to make sure but I can remember that St. John's University was playing Kentucky in the NCAA championship but that kind of helped me remember the date and also uh, this happened about two weeks before my grandfather passed away uh, I was uh, 15 year old and it was about six months to bef before my 
16th birthday. Me and my dad always coon hunted, and that's one of the things I did growing up. We used to coon hunt a lot. Uh, well, we was out coon hunting one night, and uh, I still frequent the area now. It's it's in behind my house. Uh, we was coon hunting one night, and when you're when you're 15 year old and you coon hunt, most of the time you get to back the shotgun or the 22 rifle or whatever you're whatever you're hunting with. It's usually you. If you're young, you get to pack it. And we was, hunt, we was going around through there, and then all at once it was just a, it was just, there was just a scary, creepy feeling in the air. And we've hunted all over the place. The middle of the night, top of the mountains, you know. It's, this was an unusual feeling that came in, in the air. It was just a, a scary. My dad always described it as kind of a uh, evil feel, and it was. And uh, our dogs, which were experienced hunting dogs, they had ran back to us, scared. They was terrified, actually. And they got in between our legs, and they was barking up in the mountains uh, like you would if it was an intruder or you know on your property. It was, you know, it was barking that way. And uh, of course we were scared, but neither one of them, me or my dad, neither one really said anything at this time. So we kind of pet the dogs and get them to go, try to get them to go on while they, they run out and both of them come right back, scared to death, barking. And as we're walking around this road, and we're moving slow by now because we're, we're both scared. And, and my dad does finally say, you know, can you feel that or something along those lines. And. And as we're walking to our left, it's in the fall of the year, you know, coon hunting time. You can hear something as we walk, you can hear it going through the leaves on on the side of the mountain. And we're both packing battery lights, just like they use in the coal mines. They're strong, powerful lights, they're uh, wheat lights is what we call them, what, what's what they are. And we could take those wheat lights and we would shine in there right where that sound was and we couldn't see it. Uh, but as quick as we put the lights back down and we walked a little bit, you could hear it crunching the brush and, and stuff to our left. Because to our left was a high wall probably, I don't know, I'll say maybe 40 or 50 feet high. Maybe not, maybe not that much. That's, it's hard to remember, I guess. And the land's changed a little bit now. But... Uh, I mean, the further we go, this thing's following us, and our dogs are scared, and we're shining our lights in there, and we can't see it, and my dad gets the gun back from me, because he's scared, and you know, he's scared as well, and uh, we finally go so far, and the fear, the feeling of fear is just in the air, and it gets so much that we just, we turn around, we go back. We come on back home, and uh, you know we went as far as we could because the fear and stuff was so heavy in the air, and we turned around, and as we walked back, and we got to a certain point, like there was a little draw up a, up a hollow, and uh, after we passed it, the thing quit following us, and so that that feeling of <clears throat> that feeling of fear left us, and so but we came on home, and uh, I think at the time we told my mother about it, but uh, we never did talk about it a whole lot. I mean, we told a few people, uh, you know, local people, but I've never put it out like I am now. I mean, I've never never wrote about it, really. I mean, I've mentioned it vaguely that I had an experience while coon hunting when I was younger, but I've never put it out like I have now. But at the time, uh, I didn't think nothing about it being Bigfoot. I know it was scary. Uh, I know I wanted to get out of there. But at the time, I didn't think nothing about it being a Bigfoot. There's no way it was a bear. A bear, a bear wouldn't know to hide when we, when we uh, shined our lights in there. Our dogs would not have been afraid of a bear. Uh, wasn't no kind of cat because our dogs wouldn't have been afraid of a cat. We'd killed a bobcat before with, the, with our dogs. Uh, and the one dog had ran a bear before, so it wouldn't it wouldn't have known animal to us, and it wouldn't have known animal to our dogs. 
and I, I, I guess now that I look back on it, that feeling of fear in the air, uh, and how it was hiding, and we could, but we could hear it breaking the brush. It had to be a Bigfoot. But like I said at the time, we didn't. I didn't think nothing about it. And being 15, almost 16 years old, after a few days, I, I probably didn't think a whole lot more about it. I mean, I remembered it over the years. But uh, it was just one of those events that sticks out in your mind. Uh, like for my generation, about everybody can remember where they was at and what they was doing when the uh, space space shuttle Challenger blew up. For my dad's generation, they remember where they were at when JFK was shot and killed. It was an event similar, you know, to that. It stuck in my mind all these years. Uh, and at the time, like I said, I didn't think nothing about it being Bigfoot. But years later, as I got into doing first started with online research of Bigfoot, I began to realize what it was. And in this area alone, there's been several sightings right here right around my house. I mean, we live way back in the mountains, kind of. But uh, back then as a kid, I, I guess a young man or young boy, whatever you want to call it, I didn't probably didn't dwell on it a whole lot. I was too busy playing basketball or fishing or something like that. But as I got older, you know, there's probably not a day goes by that I don't think about Bigfoot one way or the other. Uh, but when you have an event like that, it doesn't matter how many years have passed, you'll remember it. But I've never shared this report or this encounter that I had and but I thought I'd take the time today to do it. It's early in the morning. I don't have a lot to do I don't guess today. I got some wait time I gotta do but there's just no way it was another animal. The dogs are terrified so when I see people talking about dogs being friends with Bigfoot, I just don't see it. Uh I had, we had trained, skilled hunting dogs. They was terrified. Terrified, tails tucked between their legs. Going in between our legs and hiding and, and, and barking like it was an intruder. These dogs was terrified. So when somebody says that, that their dogs made a friend with Bigfoot, I just, I, I can't see it. I just don't believe it. I'd have to see it to believe it, I suppose, because my experience with it has been totally opposite of that. Maybe over time a dog might be able to become a friend or something with a Bigfoot, but I just I don't see it. If, if these trained hunting dogs that skilled coons and bobcats and ran bear, if they was terrified of this, what makes you think that it's a common yard dog or a pet dog, you know, which these dogs were also our pet dogs, I suppose, would be friends with it or, I don't know, it just seems weird to me, maybe, maybe it has something to do with that feeling of fear in the air, I guess some people, I guess that's what they call the uh, infrasound or whatever, but for me, I, I don't know, I don't really know if, it, if Bigfoot does infrasound, but that, that night there, it was very terrifying. It was just a feeling in the air, and it was an evil type feeling. This is how my dad always described it. <clears throat> is it was it just the uh, was it actually infrasound, or was it uh, just our natural fear? It's built in us. I, I don't know, but I have experienced that that feeling of fear and dread a few other times. You know, as I got older, and I actually done Bigfoot research, research over the years. But uh, I guess maybe you get accustomed to it, or you get used to it, or whatever. But I don't know. Man, that was that was, that was just a weird feeling that night. It's been a long time. But man, that was scary. And I just wanted to share, I, didn't want, I don't want to get too emotional or anything, but 
it's funny now that it was so scary back then to me, but now I get out and I try to hunt that. I try to track that and try to find it, and I, I have found, you know, things to deal with Bigfoot. But just, uh, I just wanted to share that encounter. I've never told that, never told it in detail, but that was a sp experience when I was a, well, like I say, I was 15 and a half years old, about six months before my birthday. And uh, I'm closing in on 46 year old now, and it stuck with me all these years. Still remember a lot of details about it. Been right in that area many times looking. Uh, the, it's changed some because of, uh, they've done some uh, uh, dozer work or stripping or something there, and it's kind of changed the landscape a little bit. But there's not a whole lot of that goes on anymore around here for as uh, strip mining or coal mining. And, and I know around that area where we've, you know, we've chased coons there and caught coons for years, which we don't coon hunt now, but I know there was uh, there's a lot of old mine openings and uh, a lot of auger holes and things like that. So, you know, I guess a Bigfoot could get in the old mines and stay warm or shelter or whatever, but, but I just wanted to share that with you. And,